Hey guys, Brian from the Bite the Body here. Uh, I wanted to do a little explainer video on neck pain. We're going to run a series through the week talking about things you can do for your neck pain. Uh, one of the most common problems reported uh, in cyclists, uh, apart from lower back and, 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 and knee issues, so it's something that plagues many, many cyclists and they continue with it, seeming to think that it's a, an inevitability of riding. So I wanted to talk about the main reasons for why we develop it. Well, number one, we're in a sustained posture when we're riding on our bike. Number two, it's quite an end range position. So we're actually on, when we're on the hoods, our body's flexed forward and our head is gonna be lifted upwards. So we're gonna find that we place excessive strain on the back of the neck. Three, we develop muscle imbalance. So our cervical extensors, those are the muscles of the back of the neck, they work in a shortened position in the duration of our bike rides. And those bike rides are having less variety in positions now that we're potentially riding indoors more frequently. And then finally, muscle strength, the big pink elephant in the room. How often do we strength train our neck? And the answer is for most of us is probably never at all. Um, since those muscles have to work very hard during any bike ride, it raises the question, should we be training our neck strength muscles? And my feeling with that is for most of us, if we are doing endurance riding, we should be training our neck strength, uh, our neck muscles for strength. So during this week, I'm gonna drop in some videos on neck mobility, neck strength, posture and just general advice and tips for trying to improve your overall neck function and performance and hopefully reduce neck pain and get rid of any niggling issues that you've got going on at the moment. So check back later this week for more info. Okay, so first part of our little video series on managing neck pain, I wanted to talk a little bit about mobility. So what are the sort of things that you can do to maintain good range of motion through the neck uh, to help improve how your neck feels? So the first thing is, after you've finished a ride, it's a pretty good idea to do some gentle stretches and mobility exercises to work on all of those muscles that have been working throughout the ride. So the first position I like to get into is hands behind head, bringing the chin down towards the chest and just allowing the head to relax forward, pulling some pressure down on the back of the head to get that stretch right down on either side of the neck. What we can then do is we can add a little bit of a side bend to start to get into the trap and levator scapular muscles and then same thing to the other side. While we're staying in that forward position, we can then add a little bit of rotation. So we start to get into some of the scalene muscles on either side of the neck here and here. So that takes care of some of the stiffness and tension that we'll be getting on either side of the neck. I generally spend just a couple of minutes working through each of these positions, going in and out 10 or 15 second holds into each position. Work that through at the end of your ride, see how that works out. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about some simple, simple strength exercises that we can look at to work on the neck. So first up, I'm gonna show you some exercises to work on the front of the neck. So these are your neck flexor muscles, okay? So they help to counteract and support the muscles working at the back of the neck, which we spend the duration of our cycling exercise working on. Okay, so here's number one, simply just a head lift exercise. We're gonna use a bench. You can do this lying down on the floor, probably easiest. So I'm gonna lie down, my head's supported here. And what I wanna do to make sure that I get my front neck muscles to work is to start by nodding my chin a little bit if I don't and keep my chin poking out, well then what I'm gonna find is that I use the back muscles here and the side muscles here to thrust my chin forwards, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna practice nodding the head forward, so sliding the back of the head away from me and then lifting forward just a couple of inches and holding. And now in that position, I can feel those muscles deep in the front of my neck working. I'm gonna hold that position and then lower back down. So nod the chin, sliding the back of the head away and then lifting up and holding. And back down. So for this exercise, what you wanna do is aim to get that nice little head lift, hold there for three to five seconds, lower back down nice and slowly. Aim for getting eight to 10 reps for two to three sets to start with and see how that works on getting those front neck muscles. Okay, working. so our second progression for these front neck muscle exercises is to take them through a little bit of more range of motion, so really work those flexor muscles through a greater range of motion. So again, you can do this lying on the floor or off the side of your bed so that your head can drop into a little bit of extension. So let's go through that. So I'm gonna lay back, but this time I'm gonna let my head fall off the back of the, the bench a little bit so I can get a bit of a stretch. And this time what I wanna do is I wanna curl my chin inwards and lift up and then hold. I'm gonna hold in that position there and then I'm gonna slowly lower my head back down from the bottom of the neck, middle of the neck, and the very last thing to come out is my chin. So let's do that again. Chin tucks in, rolls forward, lifting up, hold, lowering the base of the neck, 
the middle of the neck, and then finally letting your chin come out. So the idea is to do this really nice and smoothly and slowly. It's actually very, very tiring for these neck muscles. So I want you to go for five to eight repetitions and just start with two sets and see what the response is like at first. Give it a go, and let me know. Okay, how you go. so now we want to start to take those first two exercises and add another layer of complexity to them. We're just going to start to work into rotation to start to get some of the side neck muscles joining in with the front of neck muscles, okay? So we're going to take our same starting position lying back on the bench or on the floor and we're going to add some rotation in. So I'm going to lay back here just into a little bit of extension. I'm going to start by nodding my chin, lifting my head. Once I'm holding in that neutral middle position, I'm then gonna keep my chin tucked in, but I'm gonna to turn to the left, back to the middle, turn to the right, back to the middle, and then lowering back down. Okay, so one more time. I'm gonna nod my chin, lift my head, hold in that middle position, turning my head to the left, back to the middle, and turning my head to the right, keeping my chin tucked in, back to the middle, and down. Okay, so again, work this up to about six to eight repetitions. Each time you're lifting your head up, turning to each side and lowering back down. Start with two sets and build up from there. You're gonna feel really hard work around the front and the okay. side. So now we're really gonna try and crank things up a notch. What we wanna do is use one of these slightly thicker, heavy resistance bands. They come in lots of different weights. I'm using just a medium one for these exercises today, but they can get a lot thicker as you really start to build up strength. So you can get them on Amazon, various other online retailers. We wanna fix it to something solid to the wall. I've got these hooks screwed into my wall. And we're gonna get our John McEnroe on here, okay? That's probably the main reason I've chosen the red band. So we're gonna get the band right around the head, just over the ear line here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean away from where I've got the band held. So we're gonna get all these side neck muscles working. I'm gonna do a nice strong hold into that position there. And I'm gonna ease the tension back away. Gonna ease back in, holding that tension again on the side, and back away. We're gonna do a similar exercise again for working those front neck muscles. So again, we're gonna just lean into that, feeling those front neck muscles working. Make sure the chin doesn't poke out. Keeping the chin down as we press into it. And then finally, of course, let's load up those extensor muscles. So we're gonna place it around the back of the head. Then we're gonna lean back in again, holding that head, holding that head position nice and straight. So we feel all those muscles at the back of the neck just tensing up, holding that position there, easing back away, pulling back in again, and easing away. So with each of these, we want to try to aim for three to five second holds for each contraction. Again, working somewhere in that five to eight rep range, feeling fatigue in those muscles. You can just pull away a little bit further to increase the resistance or use a slightly thicker, heavier band. These exercises are really, really effective for generating and building up good strength around the neck. Don't worry, you're not gonna bulk up around the neck, but it'll massively reduce your likelihood of developing neck pain and allow you to perform through those longest of rides with a good strong neck and not your neck pain niggling you as you go through the rides. Give them a try and let me know how you get on. And if you've got any questions, email me or put some comments uh, in the below the video.